Um, but specifically, more than launching it, I think really we would like to address head-on the persistent uh, criticisms against the supposed four security features found in the Public Act 9369, which are UVLA, source code review, digital signature, and the so-called BBPAC or the voter verification paper audit claim. What we will be showing you this morning is that three of those features, well, four of those, all of those features are in the machine. And three of those features will be enabled for the 2016 elections. The only question mark is with respect to the printing of the receipt. And that is why we wanted to make this de demonstration. We would like to show what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of printing the receipt. There is also an added feature of the uh, new SAES 1800 plus machine wherein there is a monitor wherein you can view your votes and you will see that later. But the question again remains, should we enable this feature for the 2016 election? This, is, uh, this event is not just an introduction of these machines, but we would also would like to consult. We would like to build a consensus. We would like to hear out your suggestions, your recommendations, and your beliefs in respect of whether or not you believe it makes sense to print the receipt and or to view the votes that are seen in the morning. But before talking about that, I think what we wanted to do was to make sure that you see the features for yourself. So James, as Joe Carino would say before, during the time of Dr. Arwin, take it away. Before we go any further, I would like very much to show you uh, a bit something about the VCMs. Um, as you know, this is the old PCOS that we used before. All right. So the difference between the PCOS before and the VCMs that we're using now really is more than just a matter of cosmetics, right? It looks different. Um, it's it, well, it's color different. It's shaped different, and it functions. Uh, just a little bit differently to make it better. Next slide, please. For the next elections, we're looking at an estimated 54 million voters, 54 million registered voters, operating out of about, well, a lot of clustered precincts, right? Uh, we're looking at a maximum of 800 voters per precinct, and more than 37,000 polling centers will be operational. For that, we will be using almost 100,000 machines. Next slide, please. Now, the, the VCM is still paper-based voting technology. Essentially, you use a ballot, like this one, and the ballot is filled up, and you cast it by sliding it into the VCM. All right? Now, each VCM has precinct information programmed into it, which means that it's precinct specific. It also knows how many voters it expects. If it's a behind, hindi ka pwede magdagdag ng votante sa ballot VCM. Alright. Uh, the voter personally feeds the ballot into the machine so that we know exactly who voted. The ballot, of course, can be fed in any orientation, right? Alright. Next slide, please. The ballots are scanned on both sides simultaneously, which means that when the ballot is fed, a scanner on top of the scanner below takes a simultaneous picture as it passes through. Now that's very important because remember, when the ballot leaves the voter's hand to go into the VCM, that is the single time when the ballot is at its most pristine. Then yung pinakamalinis na dokumento sa buong proseso. Bakit? Because at that point, ang may hawang man ng ballot na yan, Ang nag-modify na ng balota ay yung botante mismo. Wala pa ibang humahawak niyan, 
hindi pa yan nalalayo sa kanyang paningin. So it is the most trusted document at that point. Now each machine is shipped with a battery. This, and I hope that kill me, is the battery. Alright? Each machine ships with this battery, which means that the machine will be able to operate even under conditions when electricity is either not available or is unreliable. This is very relevant because, as you know, recently there has been a state of bombings, and in fact this afternoon we're going to be talking with the NGCP about that. But in general, we're pretty confident because the machine has this battery. This battery is rated to last 14 hours straight. Okay? So that's very comforting for us. The values are identified by the machine and are rejected and are spit out if they are found to be spurious, previously scanned, um, or a duplicate. Alright? So we'll show you how that is done in a bit. Alright, next slide please. So, here's your value. One of the first things you'll notice is that it's a weird size. There's no paper that's cut exactly like this. Alright? If I were pushed to it, I'd say this is about what, 19 inches. Another thing that you're going to notice is that it is much shorter than the ballot that we used in previous elections. In previous elections, if you can imagine it, it was about two legal-sized bond papers put end to end. This is A4. So, if you look at it, it's actually less than two sheets of A4 put end to end. The other one, the one that we used in 2010 and 2013, was two long bound papers end to end. Right? So it's much shorter now. Now, the other thing you're going to notice is that there's all these markings on the ballot. You have markings here, you have markings on the side, and on the top. These are the barcodes. Alright? These are the barcodes. This is the barcode that you're probably most familiar with in terms of looks. This is how a barcode normally looks, alright? It has tiny marks, alright? These are the tiny marks. And it has, uh, well, one of the things that we're going to prove to you later on, it has a UV stamp on there as well. Next. Alright, the machine itself. The machine itself has a seven times faster processor, which means it can process information more efficiently. It has external storage with SD cards. Um, I don't think I can show them to you because they're in use right now. But the most important thing here is that there is simultaneous storing of the results in two storage media cards. In the previous elections, basically what happened was information was stored in one card, and when that was done, information was transferred from that card to the other. Alright? But now it's going to be stored simultaneously, which makes it more trustworthy, which makes it more secure. Next slide, please. Again, the VCM uh, has a battery. The difference is, in the previous elections, it was just a battery. You know, it's like you put a Duracell into your phone or into your gadget, and that's it. This one is essentially a rechargeable battery. So you put it in there, while the main power is going, the battery is also topping up. So, as long as there's power, the battery will keep charging. The touchscreen display uh, has a 7-inch monitor, which we will demonstrate to you later. It also has support for audio accessibility, which means it has this nifty set of earphones, which you're going to use for your visually impaired voters. And of course, finally, um, it has a scanner lens that has a self-diagnostic program running. Why is that very important? It's very important because one of the things that people have been worried about is what happens when you have dirt on the lenses. When you have dirt on the lenses, it can create what is known as digital artifacts. No? So, kung pinigturan mo yung balota, may makikita kang specs, or in some cases, may makikita kang bugit. With the, with the lens being self-diagnostic, it can tell, it can prompt the operator, Uy, madumi na ako. 
send the cleaning sheet through, and that will minimize, if not totally eliminate, all of those digital artifacts that you used to see. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, then you will probably have heard of it referred to as digital lines. All right, thanks. So we use passwords, of course, uh, digital signatures. Again, all of this we will show you later. And it uses 256-bit encryption. Now that's the same level of security that you can use in a bank. So if you have a bank account, you can engage in online banking. The reason you're so secure doing that is because you can use the highest level of encryption. Yung ganyang level ng encryption, yun ngayon ang i-apply natin dito sa ating mga makina. Next slide. Now, so let's go to the things that the chairman was talking about. Sabi niya, meron tayong mga, uh, may mga complaints no, about certain things na wala daw yung makina. So, these are myths actually as far as we're concerned. So let's go around busting them. First, Sabi, there was no source code review. Ano ba yung source code? Yung source code, yun yung machine-readable instructions for uh, for the BCMs. Right? You, um, it's a string, it's an alphanumeric string that basically is the fingerprint of the software that is running the computer. Alright? So, meron, uh, yung source code in 2010, nagtrawag ka hindi na, hindi siya masyado na take off, no? And besides, it was kind of late, it was a month before the elections. In 2013, mas late pala lo. It was like several days before the elections. But in 2016, siniguro natin na makaagap tayo mo sa source code review. Nag SCR tayo or source code review a full seven months before the elections. And hindi lang yung isang bagsak ng source code review. Yung source code review na ginawa natin was in two stages pa. Base code, and then later on, yung customized code. Bakit mahalaga yun? Ano ba yung base code? Yung base code, ito yung code na bit-bit ng makina nung dinala siya sa Pilipinas para ipakita sa atin. Yun yung code ng makina talaga. Tapos, yung code na yun, dahil hindi naman yung customized para sa Pilipinas, dadaan pa yan sa customization. So, nireview natin yung base code at nire-review din natin yung customized code. So, dalawang beses siya kire-review. Alright? Ano ba yung Ano yung paraan na yun para mapatunayan natin na may source code review? Simple lang yan. Like I said, every program has a fingerprint. So meron siyang pinatawag na hash code. Ano yung hash code? Yung hash code, ito ay isang string of alpha, it's an alphanumeric string. Right? So marami yan. A, 1, B, 13, whatever. Mahaba. Na makikita mo, doon sa source code mo. Yung source code na yun, yun ang ilalagay ng, 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 ng komile sa bago central. Yung sinasabi, we will put it in escrow in the central bank. So, you take the, source, the, the hash code from that source code, and you put that source code into the different machines. Para manaman ngayon ng tao kung yung source code na ginamit doon sa nilagay natin sa central bank, Plus, yung source code ng makina na ginagamit, pareho, all you have to do is to get the hash code of the main thing, the one in, in, uh, the, one in the Banco Central, and compare it to the hash codes that you can get from the machines themselves. We will show you how that can be done. But bottom line, mapapakita natin sa inyo ngayon, and we're just gonna wait for it so that kasama siya sa flow ng presentation natin, na magmamatch yung dalawang yan. Alright? So, merong paraan para makita na yung source code ay identical doon sa central bank at yung nandun sa bawat isang makina natin. Alright? Next, please. So, no source code review. Sorry, busted. Second, the myth is that the ballots do not have a UV mark. Sabi, wala daw UV lang. Ibig sabihin, pwede magsaksak ng kahit anong balota. In fact, doon sa isang rally na nakuntahan ko, sabi daw, pwede yung zero si Paso. Now, the simplest way to really prove that this is wrong is to show you na meron talagang meron UV mark yung balota. 
Maganda sana kung patayin natin yung ilaw para lang kita or kita di ba? Can you see? Ganyan yun ha? So, lalaki na lang ako sa inyo. So, as you can see, merong UV mark yung balota. Alright? Merong UV mark yung balota. So, doon pa lang, bali na kagad yung myth, di ba? Kasi sabi, wala daw UV na gagamitin eh. So, meron. Meron yan. It's on both sides. Alright? Front and back. Alright? So, I'll pass this on to our friends here. Tapos, you can maybe pass it around. Pero balik lang natin kagad. Kasi, you can use the battle. Alright? So, Meron siya. In fact, the UV mark is a physical component that has been certified by the International Certification Authority. So, meron talaga yan. So, next slide. So, again, this one, busted. We'll show you how it operates in a few minutes. Third, sabi, digital signatures were not used in 2010 and 2013 and will not be used in 2016. Ito, I'll jump ahead and say na patunayan natin yan, but I'll say that this is busted and I'll show you why later. So, busted mo na yan. Okay? And finally, sabi that BCM does not have and is not capable of producing a voter verifiable paper on the trade. Nasabi ng Supreme Court, sa isang kaso, na yung balota mismo, na pinasok mo sa ballot box, pwede nyo na ang tumayo bilang bibipat. Okay? So, tatawagin natin yung ilalabas ng makina na receipt or tape receipt or as uh, it is officially designated, where's the box? At syempre, pinaganda ka pa namin yun. Voter interpretation printout. Okay? So, mayroon na tayong special ballot box para dyan. So, the voter interpretation printout o yung resibo, theoretically, ilalagay mo sa isang pang hiwalay na box. Alright. So, papakita natin na kaya ng makina gumamit yan. Next slide, please. And let's check out the demo for that. So, Meron tayo dito tatlong uh, magigibig na colleagues ko and they will demonstrate to you how that thing works. Alright? So here I have three ballots. Alright? And uh, what I want, just, just so that we're putting this in the proper context, no? ang gagawin natin, we will have them, we will have them stand in front of these machines. Alright? Bawas ang sama nila is configured differently. Ito, meron on-screen verification. Ano yung on-screen verification? On-screen verification means na yung makina, asa na yung light natin? Yung makina, meron siyang screen, Meron siyang screen, alright, you can see it, this one, kung saan na nabas yung resulta ng boto. So, hindi mo naman na hatap yung boto. Alright. Alright. So, these are the machines. Ito yung lalabas, dito lalabas, yung tinatawag natin yung on-screen verification. Alright? So, this one, Narrow on screen verification and receive. Ito, on screen verification lang. Walang receive. Just to show you na kaya ang gawin ng makina. Ito, yung pinatawag namin walang wala. Parang pansit, walang wala. No? Ano lang siya? Uh, makina lang siya, nagbibila lang siya, wala siya on screen verification, wala siya receive. Alright? So, are we ready to show them? Alright. So, they will be setting up the machines to accept the ballots. In the meantime, are they okay? I'll see you. Hmm. Alright, um, let's use that as an opportunity to show them how to start with the machines. Go ahead. 
Uh, ang gagawa po ng setup ng ating sound natin na ay si Jel. Wala ko na lang natin si Jel para may inspire ba? Alright. So, kita nyo, pinapasok si Jel yung uh, eye button at sa ngayon ay nag-enter ng pin code. Okay. Now, there are three eye buttons available for Jel to use. Pero ang gagamitin niya yung uh, eye button na naka-assign sa mga BI members. Kung dinamit niya yung ano, pang uh, chairman, kung dinamit niya yung pang chairman, pwede din na ang gagamitin niya. Can you hear me? Ah, can you just look at the screen so that you can see what you're doing? Ano yan? Ano yung print ng zero receipt? Yung ating ating PCM? Ayos, ating print ko yun. Ah, so ito yung So, balikan natin yung sinasabi natin kanina uh, hash code, di ba? Ito po yung hash code. I'll pass it around so you'll see it, but it's this string of numbers right here. And this matches the same code that will be generated from the archival copy of the source code. Okay? So, ang daming code. So, source code generates a hash code which you can see on the tape that's issued by the machine. So, ito pa sa natin ang tulad sa mga subyekta. Thank you. Hi, Director James. We would like to acknowledge the presence of one of the foremost IT experts in the country, Mr. Lito Avelina. Hello, Mr. E.S. Watch. Good morning, sir. 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 All right. So, nakikita ko na yung mga icon. Kung makikita niyo yung icon doon sa screen, ng gumagalaw ng balota, what that means is that the ballot is ready to be accepted by the machines. So, tanda na, tanda na, tanda na, okay? Yung tatlo should try as much as possible to feed the ballot simultaneously because we want to see how the, the presence of the BB5 will affect the voting. So, ready, steady, go! So, pumapasok yung balota at pinaprocess ngayon ng mga kina yung mga balota. Again, kanda natin dito sa inyong kaliwa ang ating wala-wala. Uh, so, yung ginagawa niya na yung dapat, sinicheck niya kung sino binoto niya base doon sa on-screen verification. Ano yung on-screen verification? Yun yung binabasa ng makina kung ano yung nilagay mo sa balota at ililalabas niya doon sa screen. After that, pwede nang i-share, i-cast yung balota and tapos na siya. Si Jover, tapos na ba? So, si Jover, tapos na. Nakast na yung balota niya. Alright, may iba na. Dumahan pa 
sa tape, dumaan pa sa on-screen sa on verification. Meron kasing math involved dyan. Let's go to the back. Just wait for us. So basically, ang nangyayari, ang importante dito ang bantayan natin kung gaano katagal yung tao sa ballot box, kung saan pinapasok niya yung balota niya. The longer he takes, the quicker the build-up is. Alright? The quicker the build-up is. And that causes a lot of problems in the night. So that's one of the first things that we have to look at. So question, gaano ba katagal talaga doon sa ballot box? Let's like this. Let's do the math. On-screen verification, on-screen verification, that's when you look at the ballot interpretation on the screen. Yung verification yung may time out yan, 30 seconds. Meaning to say, if you don't touch the screen, then who's actually going to be right? And it's a cast name balota. Alright? So, when you have on screen verification, you're looking at the screen, binabasa mo yung binoto mo. Pag hindi mo binanaw yung screen, 30 seconds, magkakot of yun. And it will cast the ballot automatically. Alright? But if you're touching the screen, then you're going to have to press the green button. The green button means cast the ballot. Okay? So, at saka nang lalabas yung balota. So, when we're talking about on-screen verification, essentially, you're looking at a minimum of 30 seconds. Assuming na hindi mo binabasa or wala kang pakialam, 30 seconds bago siya mag-cast. Alright, so, if you're going to think 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and then you, you, you think, how many voters ba talaga are gonna vote on election day? Ang standard natin is about 75%. So if you have a precinct size of about 800 voters, we're talking 75% of that, then let's figure it for 600 voters. 30 seconds times 600 equals 1,800 seconds. 1,800, I'm sorry, 18,000 seconds. 18,000 seconds divided by 60 divided by 60 equals 5 hours. You're essentially adding 5 hours to the process. So, mahaba na tayo yung proseso, 73 ka na nga, tatapila mo pa ng 5 hours, simply because every voter will take some time to do this. Alright. Next slide, please. Paano naman yung printout? Next. Yung tape takes approximately 13 seconds to print out. 13 seconds to print out. Now, on, on the one hand, you're looking at just adding 30 seconds to the process. But, ano mo yung tape? Eh, di ba babasahin mo muna? Bukusisingin mo muna? Eh, ang late pa naman na sulat. So, titignan mo yan. And remember, hindi lahat ng butante kay edad mo. Right? Hindi lahat ng butante kasing sanay magbasa ng ganito. As you, malamang ikaw sanay ka nito sa grocery. Parang, so in other words, you have 13 seconds to print this out, but you're also going to have to accommodate the fact that people examine the tape. So let's say, let's say just for computation's sake, it's 30 seconds to print the tape, 30 seconds times 600, that's at about 2.1 hours. Okay? 30 seconds times 600 equals 7,800. 7800 divided by 60 divided by 60 equals 2.1 hours. So you're talking about 2.1 hours just to accommodate the printing of the state. But in reality, you're not just accommodating the printing, you're also accommodating the reading of the tape. So it's actually closer to about 7 hours that you're adding into the system. So that's a long time, right? That's a very long time. So how, how does that affect the system? Let's go back. So, we were we, we just talked about how long it will add to the entire system. But there are other considerations as well. Alright? There are other considerations. First, there is some sort of legal concern here. Because if you have tape, if you have tape, then what are you gonna do with the tape? Remember. This tape reflects your ballot accurately, which means that if you show this to anyone, 
you are essentially violating the secrecy of your own ballot. And it doesn't matter if it's your ballot that you're violating the secrecy of. It's still a violation. Alright? So, kaya meron tayong ganito. Meron tayong... Supposed to be new mulung kuya dyan. Alright? But now we will see how that actually plays out. Alright? Let's see how this actually plays out. So, we have here a Board of Election Inspectors. Alright? And they will, for now, show you how this sort of thing works. Again, this is not a strictly scientific time and motion study. This is, uh, we're just going to show you how this sort of thing works. But this is how it's probably going to look like on election day. Go ahead. Kung paano ginagamit ang printout. 
to the gaseous ballot and now he's waiting for the first ballot.
red by star. If the machine state is closed, which means that it will no longer accept any votes. And if you can see the bottom, it says printing report. So yet it's inside that in a marriage of that long digital signatures that you can pass. Alright? So we'll just wait for the printing of the report. And that does it basically for the security demo. Four features that we demonstrated. First, the existence of UV marks on the ballot. Alright? Second, we showed you about the source code review, about the hashtag, and I think that thing is still going around. We showed you the digital signatures, and then we did show you that there is the VV path. So, I think it'd be fair to say, with these, that all of these things have been busted. Alright? So, um, of course we're going to take any questions you might have. Please feel free to ask us anything that you want. Thank you very much. Um, I guess the floor is open for questions. Is there any questions? Oh, by the way, what you're seeing right now, that's, that's the election return. Uh, all right. Yes, sir. All right. Situations. Uh -huh. Pero pag under 